You're listening to the Let's Be Real podcast. Now, here's your host, Andy Hughes. Our guest right now is an everyday leader in many ways. She is a John Maxwell team certified leadership development coach and the CEO of Make Connections for Life, LLC. She also hosts the Everyday Leaders 50 in 50 podcast. We are pleased to welcome Melanie Ake to the Let's Be Real podcast. Melly, thank you for joining us. How are you? Thank you so much, Andy. This is a, just an honor to be on your show today. We're so thrilled to have you, and I want to start the conversation off uh, getting to know you a little bit more. You have such an interesting path. Would you talk a little bit about your journey? What did your journey look like to becoming the CEO of Make Connections for Life, LLC? You know, I think a lot of this is who influences you. And so a few years ago, I was working in corporate America, and I was uh, an executive in medical devices, and I was working for an organization that was testing me beyond my limits. You know, it was all those last minute, um, can, you, can we get this done in two weeks or can we get this done tomorrow? And it was constantly showing up and adding value to the organization. And I thought, my goodness, I am exhausting myself and I'm forgetting to invest in my own growth, my own growth, right? And so, and I had somebody, an executive leader asked me, what value do you bring to the organization? And I thought, are you kidding me? <laughs> and so, you know, when somebody puts you on your heels like that and you start to say to yourself, how do I communicate that? And it was about that time when the John Maxwell team, someone on the phone lines, you know, had reached out and said, we have a program and we think you might really want to take a look at this. And so it was just timing really for me to think about what I needed to do at that point in my life to, to start communicating my message. So I did, I joined the John Maxwell team and I learned through this that my story, my own personal story was so unique and it had so much value to be able to start communicating my message stronger and broader um, around, you know, and around my circle of influence. And, and so what would that do to change? change my capacity. And, and so anyway, as I went through the John Maxwell team, became certified, one of the things that John challenges to do is tell your own story. Mm -hmm. Go back and start to understand the connections that you've made in your life, the influences of people that have really guided you towards this direction. And then what are you trying to accomplish to create significance in the world? And so that's really how the Make Connections for Life idea, the, the um, you know, my husband said, could you think of a longer name? <laughs> but, <laughs> but I said, really, that's who I am. I make connections through what I've learned in my life mm -hmm. of how valuable that is. And so that's how, the, that's how I form, formed the company. I love that. And I love the name, by the way. Why, while your husband says it's long, I love it. I think it's great. <laughs> um, you know, because Make Connections for Life, I mean, that's really the goal, I think. I mean, I can, gosh, I've made so many connections, even just starting this podcast alone. I mean, that's what we're doing right now. We, we made a connection through uh, somebody else who I connected with. And I think that's just so interesting, though, what you're saying, making connections for life, because even sometimes when I connect with somebody, that leads to connections with five other people. And it's amazing how that happens. It's almost like a domino effect in a way. It is a domino effect. And I'll tell you a backstory. So when I started to write my story, I realized that I'm in Indianapolis, Indiana, and that John Maxwell, why he spoke to me so significantly, I think, in my life, is that my great-grandfather built a tabernacle. It was a tabernacle for people to come and learn and minister to other ministers. And it became a nursing home and a, and a place of faith. And so what I learned through my story is that John Maxwell's father, Melvin, had preached at this tabernacle when I was a baby. And so the connection that I felt, my soul connection to this whole process that I was experiencing, it really, it was so powerful, Andy. And then and I showed up and said, wow, right? You just find those things, those little gold nuggets that you say, well, this is my right path. I know I'm, I'm designed for this. Mm -hmm. no, that's amazing and, and so inspiring. Let's rewind a little bit. Um, what was your childhood like? I had heard that you know, you went to multiple schools growing up, and, and that's something that I can relate to as well. Um, I switched school districts right before high school. That 
obviously played a huge part and you know it was a big challenge for me to developing and, and getting used to that and I know you also played in a men's hockey league for for a long time uh, what, what did you learn from those experiences growing <laughs> up <laughs> yes well my father passed away of lung cancer when he was 30 I was five and so uh, that created a lot of change in our life you know the stability kind of went out the window and as my mom was a nurse we uh, came back to Indianapolis, but before we came back, before I was six, I was started kindergarten in California in Palo Alto where he was being treated, and then we went to Florida where he passed away, and then Indianapolis. So I went to three different kindergartens, so that's kind of started off my school life, um, but then, you know, went to six different schools before, before I went to middle school, and I think that made me really adaptable to change. You know, mm -hmm. a lot of people fear change as they get older and they may not have been military brats, you know, or had a, had a reason to kind of be uprooted in um, and experience different things, uh, different environments that really force you to, you know, you have to show up and try to add value to people. You can't just be selfish. You can't um, understand that the world's only about you and your needs because you learn quickly. If you want to make friends, if you want to be a part of things that you enjoy, you're going to have to figure out ways to, to connect to people and to identify with those. Mm -hmm. And so through all those changes, it was in second grade. So I was seven and my, I brought home one of those flyers, you know, not, not anymore. Everybody gets emails, but yeah. we used to have these paper flyers that we would bring home on Friday nights and it would give the recap of the week, you know, what the school lunches were going to be and activities. Mm -hmm. yep. And so I brought that home and my mom saw this and I said, hey, there's hockey signups next week. Okay. And, and so she looked at me and said, well, we should go. We should go, right? As a single parent, she didn't even think about the cost. She just said, let's go. So we go over to the ice rink, the local community ice rink, and there were no other girls and it was all boys, and they had all been playing forever, um, and there was a used hockey equipment sale, and so, you know, the equipment's really expensive, ice time's expensive, but as a single parent, my mom looked at me and said, do you want to do this? And because she thought it was field hockey, that's the really funny mm. thing, and so we <laughs> get over there, and it's ice skating, and I didn't know how to ice skate, but you know what? I said yes, because I thought, how cool is this? Here we are, my mother supports this, and I think it would be great to learn. So I got a stick in my hand. I got a cone to kind of learn how to go around the rink and put, learn how to tie my skates and have other people help me. And, and so these guys, these boys became my family. And so for 12 years, I played in this league. And, and really, it became something that I, I didn't, I wasn't fearful of, right? I had so much change already. Mm -hmm. I thought this is kind of where I'm supposed to be. And and, you know, through that, today I think the lesson is doing one thing really that you're passionate about, which I loved the game, the strategy of ice hockey. And so that kept me really connected, no matter if boys were making fun of me um, or, you know, parents thought you don't belong here. I never really felt that because I was so passionate about learning the game, the strategic game of hockey. Mm -hmm. And there's so, so much that you can take away for life in that, right? right. Um, it just, it's, it's amazing. And so, but, but, you know, through that, I look back and say, I can't believe I really did that. Like I, without even question, mm -hmm. it was just, I showed up at 6am, we had games, we went on Wednesday nights and, and traveled and, and just became, that was my community. And so through school, I was athletic, obviously, but I earned all those, you know, Arnold Schwarzenegger at the time I was going through school had these presidential patches for, for athletes. And, and so I earned all of those like physical fitness patches and awards because I played volleyball and basketball and softball and, and was always playing hockey. So I was kind of, my, my body was multifaceted in, you know, developing. And so I just think it made me really be able to be really strong and confident. That's a really cool story. And I think sports are great for that too, because I mean, I, I, I can relate too. I mean, like when I moved school districts, I, you know, I had to get involved with something to, to meet people. And I think that's something that you should always do. If there's something that interests you or anything that you want to do, you can really build a community. And it sounds like you did that. So um, that's awesome that you were able to, 
you know, just say yes and, and learn from that previous experience where you've had so much change, you're used to it. Now, moving forward a little bit, after going, you know, through all that with your childhood, you, you've worked with, uh, you worked in multiple industries and now obviously you are CEO of Make Connections for Life, LLC. Going out of high school and maybe even um, after that point, what did you want to do? Um, did you have a plan on leading people? Was this something that you always wanted to do or um, did it just kind of develop over time? You know, I think my mom would tell you that when I was little, I had all the older kids lined up on the sidewalk and I was giving them directions. <laughs> <laughs> so I was the delegator from very early on. But I think, you know, as going through school, I was a class president. I was, you know, different levels of influence on different teams that we played on. One of the girls that, uh, as we go back and telling our story, uh, she and I went around and got a hundred signatures to petition to start the first girls softball team oh, wow. at our high school. And I had forgotten that story. You know, it was like, well, you just kind of go on and live your life. But I, have, I guess I've always wanted to create things for people, right? Create systems that people don't have already and find the gap. And so I think, I think it's just come natural for me because I've seen I wanted to add value in some capacity. And I'm an only child. And so maybe that too, the, mm -hmm. the, the spirit of wanting to be connected to something bigger in the world, um, I think drives me a lot. Um, and so after high school, you know, I'd done all this and had great experiences. And so my grandparents lived in Orlando and I had grown up at Disney World from 1972, you know, and had been there constantly. And I thought, wow, to be able to go into the workforce before I go off to Ball State, and I was going into journalism. And, and so I thought, I really want to understand from a career, what does Disney do that makes it different? And so I went down to my grandparents, and I, at that time in 1986, I went to the trailers. They had trailers off-site uh, of Magic Kingdom and uh, mm -hmm. I think, I don't know what they call it now, like it used to be the marketplace. And um, so today there were, there were trailers all the way back behind all this. And you went and filled out an application physically, mm -hmm. not online. <laughs> you physically filled out an application and they took you through a process and, uh, and I got interviewed. And so I, I got the job and I went through the traditions classes that a lot of people that if you have thought about working at Disney or you've known somebody that's worked at Disney, they talk about these traditions classes. And these are value classes. You know, it's like it, not a uniform, but it's the culture that we all try to talk about today. And mm -hmm. companies will talk about corporate culture. What does that look like? Well, at Disney, you feel it when you're there as a guest. You know, if you spill your coffee, there's going to be somebody there picking it up. Mm -hmm. If you have, um, if you've messed up your reservation, they're going to fix it for you. If you're late to a ride and you need to get a fast pass, you know exactly where to go and they're going to help you. You know, they're going to give you the access to make you have a great day. And that's what leadership is all about. And so the traditions classes back then were about how you dress, how you show up, what you say, and how you receive, you know, how you react to situations. And that's what leadership is all about, right? It's not what happens to you. It's how you react to it. And so for guests, you know, at Disney, you're having this experience and it's the happiest place on earth. And if something doesn't work for your guest, you have to figure out, you know, what are you going to do to make them have a great experience? And so the traditions classes teach you that. They teach you how to show up, you know, and for girls, it was, you can have one necklace, you can have one ring, you have to have, yeah. you know, clear nail polish, you have to have, you know, um, not bright colored lipstick, you're your dresses or your skirts have to be this much below your knees, right? And there were certain values, cultural, physical values that they wanted you to show up because that was their brand. And, uh, and so, and I love that. And I don't know what attracted me so much to that, but I felt like, my gosh, if we're consistent across the whole park, right? And I got that. I just got that message. Consistency brings value. And I think that was one of the biggest lessons that I learned uh, from going through that is just um, you all show up the same, you do the same, you create a brand, and that, that creates your culture. Yeah, it certainly does. I, I think there's so many things that um, 
Disney does so well. And, and, and that's, a, that's an amazing experience that you were able to spend some time there and learn so much. And, and speaking of Disney, both of us uh, have had the opportunity to talk to uh, Lee Cockrell, who was a former executive at Walt Disney World on our podcast. And, and if you haven't uh, listened to Melanie's yet, definitely go ahead and check that out because, um, man, I mean, that guy knows a ton about leadership. And one of the things that really stood out to me that he that he talked about um, was when he said, uh, life gets easier when you do the hard stuff. And I think it took me a moment to think about that. And I thought, you know what, uh, you're right, Lee. I mean, that's 100% right. And I feel like that can, you can really relate that to your experiences as well. Because, you know, even going back to your childhood, you had all those changes and, you know, joining the men's hockey team. I mean, those things aren't easy to do at first and you were willing to try them. And I think um, you were really able to benefit from those experiences. So could you talk a little bit about your experience with um, talking to Lee and what you've learned um, from him and Disney? Oh my gosh. You know, I think for me, he validated what I felt, what I understood about the culture, what I understand about how people experience Disney, but it was how does, how do you lead 60,000 people to be consistent across the brand, right? How do you do that? How do you influence that? And I think what was the, one of the most interesting things that, that I took away from our conversation was that he brought in Myers-Briggs, right, to write a profile to be able to say, these are the kinds of people that we want to think about hiring. And so from a leadership perspective, he knew that he had to control that facet so that if you can weed out the people that really don't believe what you believe, then you, you will accelerate, right? Your hiring, your process, your being able to convince them about a culture. Because we know as business owners, you know, many times you'll hire people and you'll say, well, if we can just get them to believe the way that we have, that we want to show up for customers, then that's 90% of the game. And so he kind of cut through the fat and figured out, like, let's bring them in and let's design our own process to evaluate those. And, and so to bring on a new cast member, you know, you had to kind of have all the boxes checked. Mm -hmm. And I think that is critical because it looks different, right? And it is different because you know, and like I told him, the funny thing is when an athlete wins the, the Olympics or when you get the Nobel Peace Prize, right? It's funny, but from a marketing perspective, they say, what are you going to do next? And they say, I'm going to go to Disney World. <laughs> <laughs> right. Right? Because you want to celebrate. You're just like, that's the happiest place on earth. And he, for many years, was a catalyst of ensuring that that value and that culture remain consistent. Mm -hmm. And so I, I just love him for that. And, and that's why when I reached out and, and we decided mm -hmm. to do the podcast together, I thought, Wow. And so I had put out on my social media, like, hey, I'm going to get ready to interview Lee Cockrell. What are the things that you want to know? Mm -hmm. And so I thought it was great because some of the kids that were looking to get a full time job that were on as, you know, they were college program um, kids now. And, and they're saying, what do I say? How do I interview the mm -hmm. right way? And what are the things that what are the values I need to bring to show up? And he answered a lot of those questions. And so I just cool. really appreciate his, his realness, right? He is real. He's the real deal. <laughs> this is the and Let's Be Real podcast, you know. <laughs> I know. And it was wonderful. And so you just felt like he really cares so deeply. And when you know his story about going through all the difficulties that he had and how much respect he has for his mother and just the nurturing side of why he has the values of his life. Um, so I think that's really important. So yeah, it was, it was a wonderful experience. <laughs> yeah, it, it definitely, uh, I definitely enjoyed listening to it. And um, yeah, that personal connection with the, the motherhood thing I thought was interesting as well. And something I really never thought about until he brought it up. Um, and there are a lot of uh, common themes when, you know, when you compare being a leader and, and being a mother, it's, it's very similar. So I thought that was really interesting. Now, in, in addition to Disney, I know you also, uh, you worked in multiple other industries as well, uh, banking and the medical industry. What were some of mm -hmm. the lessons that you learned from there and, and how are you able to apply that uh, to where you're at now? Oh gosh, you know, I think it's, it's value in people first. Mm -hmm. You know, it's always about showing up for the people and not the product. And so, you know, in banking, it's, it's 
it's always, I remember one of my first bosses said, oh, we have to, we have to cross sell and we have to build the portfolio. You know, it's all about products. And I said, well, what about the people? Like if we take care of our customers, they're going to want to come and do business with us. Right. And so I got involved in kind of the, the marketing side of the banking and got to show up at conferences and, and really that was where I wanted to, I saw myself, right. I didn't see myself as a, a bank manager or commercial loan officer staying there forever. I wanted the connection of people to make them feel like we had value in our services and same thing in medical. Uh, I worked it for many years for Cook Medical, which is the largest private medical device manufacturer in the world. And they were looked different than anybody else because they weren't a commissioned sales force. Like many people would think I'm going to get into medical because I'm going to make a bazillion dollars, right? <laughs> That's what everybody thinks. I'm going to be in medical sales because I can make a lot of money. And so, and so Cook was different because Cook's values were doctors designed products, especially for the endoscopy side that I worked in. And, and they would um, decide what was great for a patient from their research and they would come to cook and they would physically get the, the um, technicians and the engineers and they would design these products that they knew would work. And so our jobs were really to just connect with them and to be able to train the way that they wanted their devices to be used and the best outcomes for the patient. And so that was really, you know, for me, that's why I worked there for 10 years because it had so much value yeah. to me personally in my journey. And I got it. You know, it wasn't just a sales, medical sales job. It was really connecting to those doctors and helping them to train other people on the proper way to do things. So mm -hmm. I loved it. Loved yeah, it. Yeah. And yeah. And, and so from that, you know, so I took a big risk, Andy. I took a big risk about six years ago. And a company pursued me and they said, oh, come from Cook. We, we need you to help us train our sales preps how to connect to doctors. And I thought, but I'm so comfortable. I'm so comfortable. I love what I do. I love my customers. I love my company, but I needed to grow. You know, I just felt like I needed to stretch. So I said, yes, I said, yes. And I left and it was the scariest thing. It took me three months. I kept going back and forth with my boss. I don't know if I want to leave, but I have to leave. And, and so he finally said, you got to give me a decision. <laughs> <You know? laughs> so I left and it allowed me to grow in the capacity that I had never imagined. Right. And it was scary. Um, but I, I got to do some international training. I, I got to develop an entire training sales department and, and really understand the value of, you know, structuring big sales meetings and agendas and and so and and communicating and uh translating um some of our stuff for these international teams in poland and german and italian and french <laughs> and and so what an experience to be able to do these things and go to those countries and so i would have never had those opportunities had i stayed in my comfort zone mm -hmm. that i was good at but I needed something. My soul was pulling me. And so I did it. And I loved what I was doing and was, again, you know, like I said at the very beginning, challenged to do some of these things when you're pushed up against a wall and, and they know you will do this because you have the passion. Mm -hmm. And so you'll always be asked, do the special project. Oh, you'll do it right? We have three days to get this done. Hey, we need you on the team, right? And so right. that's, that's what happened. And, and so I just kept saying yes. And, and that's when I decided like, hey, John Maxwell, that's the guy that really can help me understand how I can add value to myself mm -hmm. instead of just everybody else, right? And, and so that's what started to really change and help me reflect on how do I show up bigger for the world? And um, yeah. Yeah, that's a, that's an incredible story. I think it, one thing you touched there, you said that um, you know you were in your comfort zone. I think that is uh, a key is to, is to get out of your comfort zone a little bit because you're right. If you're doing something for years and you've mastered it, you know you kind of have to think to yourself, well, well, now what? You know what what else can I learn? Because I think it's important to be a lifelong learner. Otherwise, you might get too comfortable and, and you might lose motivation to add that value. And I think if you continue to challenge yourself, you're going to learn 
more and more as you go on. And then you can apply that to add more value to others. Yep, absolutely. And making the connections for these people, these international team members and some of these doctors that I, you know, was able to start a relationship with, you know, I follow them on social media now because the world is so small. It is so small. It is. And, and we, we meet, you know, they'll be at conferences now um, in the United States and we'll be able to, to connect. And so that just deeply touches my soul. I love that. If I'm traveling to Seattle and, and I know somebody online, I'll reach out and say, hey, I'm going to be here. Does anybody have uh, an opportunity for coffee, right? Um, I'll be Panera or, or Starbucks <laughs> or whatever. And I've had a lot of people that will, will do that. And so we'll get to see face-to-face -face instead of just online. Uh, and so it's a, it's a great thing. Um, thank you, everyone that has created this, this media platform. You know, Bill Gates for creating Windows 95 and right. Steve Jobs for, for helping us really think bigger, right? Those are the guys that gave us this opportunity. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, Windows 95 was called Windows 95 because it was in 1995. Right. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> oh. yeah, it's amazing when you think back, like, I remember using Windows 95. I mean, I was only, I, I mean, I was probably like five years old in 95, but I do vaguely remember using that. And, and it's just crazy how technology has changed. I mean, without these technological changes, we're not talking right now. I mean, I think it's amazing how you can make so many connections and you can network with so many people. It's, it's an unbelievable thing. And um, I've had the chance to interact with people that I never thought I would be able to interact with. And, and it's all because of uh, the internet. So I, I think that's a great point that you make. And, and it is a way that you can continue to make connections. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I mean, think about LinkedIn. You know, when, when you say many people will connect to you because they see your profile or they see what your company is doing and they want to learn more information without these resources and if you're not if you're isolated in a job where you say okay i i work you know remotely and so a lot of people will say oh i'm so isolated and i get so depressed uh, i talk to a lot of people that say that i get so depressed because i don't have a group that i can go socially be with um to talk about ideas or get into a conference room with them we're all doing it online now but i think that's a great opportunity for you to start investing in yourself and learning why you're doing what you're doing right <laughs> and right. so having the extra time to take classes or to exercise or to do whatever it is that really is your purpose because now you're doing things on your own if your time management well you know lee cockrell talks all about oh, yeah. managing your time right and so <laughs> creating that time management window if you can do that as an isolated or a remote uh, employee you can actually impact your life in such a bigger capacity. And so that's what I think there's so much opportunity for everyone um, that say, you don't go to a building, but gosh, look, now if you really manage your time, you can get so much more done for yourself and your company mm -hmm. and bring value to it. So, yep. And that's an important thing to think about as well, especially as a leader. Um, man, there's uh, there's no shortage of resources out there to, uh, to you know to to help with your development. I mean, it's not like the old days where you had to you know pick up a book and that that was like your only option. I mean, books are still fantastic as well, but you know there's so many videos and classes, and I mean there's just so many resources that you can get involved with. And I think one of the things that is important with leadership is investing in yourself. Um, I, I talked to Mark Cole on this podcast, who's the um, CEO of John Maxwell Companies, and, and he said something about how, um, you know, it's important to lead yourself before you lead others. And I, I thought that was a really cool point that he made, because you really have to invest not only your time, but maybe sometimes money as well to, to invest in yourself. I think we all really need to do that, because it can really um, benefit you in the long run if you continue to invest in yourself and just learn as much as you possibly can. It changes your life, Andy. And I don't know, you know, it's not like that aha moment that you say, oh, if I would have known this a long time ago. I think in many times in corporate America, we expect those trainings, those quarterly trainings that we say, oh, achieve, you know, communication or, or things that we do now to go to companies and train on these issues and these, these um, ideas, right, of being able to understand your personality and how to connect and how to communicate and how to lead uh, your teams. 
And so I think that's important, but don't just rely on your company to put, to put their values inside of you. Mm -hmm. If you understand what you're passionate about, and this is where, you know, going to school and getting your master's and getting your PhD and things that you believe in. But if you're just listening to this and you're in just a, um, you know, an everyday company, you're beginning your career or you're tenured in your career, nothing is stopping you from, from deciding to take a class online, mm -hmm. to pick up a book, right? To, to get involved in a mastermind of some sort about something that interests you. Because what happens when you get around like-minded people that really believe what you believe, you grow in ways that you have no idea. Like that capacity for growth, it expands you and you begin to think of new ideas and new ways that you can actually add value to what you're already doing. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's kind of the magic, right? And people will say, oh, um, you can't see it, you feel it. And it is so true because once you feel it, wow, <laughs> <laughs> it's that clarity moment, right? And, and then you think of ways that, that are around you uh, that the universe starts to respond to you. When you really know what your purpose is and you see it and it becomes so crystal clear, there are things that just start to begin to happen around you that you can't explain. Mm -hmm. uh, and so I think a lot of people, a lot of leaders will talk about this. But I think when you go through it, it's like a spiritual revelation, a transformation. Mm -hmm. And and you want everyone to feel that because that's what happens. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 100%. And, and there really is no finish line, you know, when you're adding value. I mean, there's always, it's always going to be an infinite game. And, and that's something that you can <laughs> always just keep on expanding, you know. I mean, uh, it, it's crazy how... You know, like, you know, you probably have felt this when you host a podcast and, and someone takes the time, maybe it's 30 minutes, maybe an hour, whatever it is. Sometimes that amount of time can really change a life or it can change that person's day. It could change that person's month. It could change that person's year or their life. And I think that's a really cool thing is that there are so many people out there, uh, you know, le they're leaders that are willing to add value. And I think that's really what we all try to try to be is just to add as much value as we can. Well, and everybody has a unique story. You know, I think from being a podcast host and part of it is we get to listen. We get to listen to somebody share their life and what makes them feel like, what influenced them, what was the one thing, right, that made you do this at that particular time. And I was just interviewing a guest recently that talked to me about his biggest influence. And he got really choked up because he talked about Kobe Bryant. Oh, yeah. You know, Kobe Bryant was such a force of nature. And, and to him, he had never met him. He never got an autograph from him, but he watched him and he got to go see him um, at an event. And so he felt what Kobe did to influence the world. He felt that in such a big way. And so, you know, whoever that is that influences you in your life, whether it's Lee Cockrell, right? If you're a Disney employee and you never got to meet him, but you felt his influence, whether that's Steve Jobs, you know, you worked at Apple or you are passionate about designing products. Those people, because of what they believe, you also think that the world can be bigger and greater. And so that's what I want people to realize from my podcast is mm -hmm. every single person has that capacity to do the things that they're passionate about. And, yep. and just do it in your own way, right? Don't mm -hmm. do it like somebody else. Do it your own way. Yep, 100%. Yeah, I mean, if, if there's something that's been done the same way for the past five years, that doesn't mean that it has to be that way. And I think that's definitely an important point that you make in terms of creativity. I mean, everybody has awesome ideas, and I think you should always present those great ideas because you never know. It could really be become a reality. I mean, I can be honest with you. I mean, when I was first hired at this job, I never would have thought I'd been able to host a podcast and, and here we are. So um, I think it's, it's really cool. Yeah. I mean, it's just a really cool opportunity. And um, I think I would encourage anyone uh, to, to, you know, go with your ideas and, and really try to go all out with it. Now we talked about 
you mentioned your podcast there. Um, I'd like to talk about that now. Uh, how did that whole thing begin with the podcast? And I know um, you're trying, you were creating a, a traveling studio for your podcast, which is, is <laughs> tremendous. I love that idea. Uh, could you talk a little bit about the beginning of the podcast and, and how it really evolved over time? Yeah. So, okay. So go back to 2017. I just gotten certified with John Maxwell. And uh, as I left writing our stories, you know, uh, that was in March. And so he challenged us to study the 15 invaluable laws of growth. That's a book that he had written and it was very popular. And many people told me, if you learn these laws and these principles, you can teach this to anyone and you can add value to your own life as well. And I thought, Okay, so I left with a plan and I emailed a lot of people and I said, Be, let's start a mastermind and let's start discovering things about ourselves that we never knew. So if John says it, you have to do it. So I started this and about December, I started thinking about, oh my gosh, in January, I'm going to turn 50. In January of 2018, I'm going to be 50. And there was something inside of me that said, what are you going to do? Like, I never had this goal of I'm going to climb Mount Everest or I'm going to go on a Hawaiian cruise. I didn't have that kind of a thought about it. But as, as I came closer and closer to it, I kept really starting to understand my story and thinking, okay, I went to school for journalism. I was influenced by my grandparents so greatly in this, um, in, in this faith-based community of connecting people and wanting to add value. I trained at Disney. Like there were so many things that start mapping that out on a whiteboard and figuring out what is it? How are you supposed to show up next for your next 50 years? Right. And so what I realized is my grandparents had the biggest influence in my life. Um, and they were 50 when I was born. So again, here we go, right? Here's just the number 50. And, and so then I said, okay, my birthday is 2018. My birthday was the second Friday in January, mm -hmm. which we have 52 weeks in a year. So I didn't design this. God did. <laughs> so that <laughs> left me 50 weeks to do something in my wow. 50th year. And I said, I'm going to interview 50 guests. So that's, that's how it came. It was the, the 50 guests in 50 weeks, and it was launched on my 50th birthday. How about that? No, that's incredible. And I'm I'm coming up on my that? I'm coming up on my thirtieth birthday, so I'll have to. I don't know if the math will turn out as as well as it did for you, but <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I'll, I'll have to think about that. <laughs> you know, and and it was just something that I um it just spoke to me. You know, I was like, how can I connect? I can do a podcast. My husband is in, in media. He's fabulous. He's the genius when it comes to hey, I'd like to help you know, do something bigger. And he is just, he sits down and really as a, you know, we're such great partners because we really think the same way. Mm -hmm. And so he designed the coffee mug and the everyday leaders brand. And, and we just said, how are we going to do this? We need microphones and he knows all the audio. So he just started researching and, you know, the way we started off is not the way we are doing it today because we learned a ton, uh, but we decided that we were just going to do it. And mm -hmm. so I invited guests that had uh, influence from my life that I wanted to figure out, like, let, let's learn a little bit more. Because I'll tell you something, if you have friends in your life, your circle of friends, and you have coffee with them, or you go to Sunday school, you teach Sunday school with them, mm -hmm. or you're involved in an athletic team with them, you know them on a certain level. But if you sit down and you say, I would like to ask you specific intentional questions, and you listen, you will learn so much about life and your perspective. It will not only change their life to give them a voice, mm -hmm. it changes your life because you, you go through this process of listening to understand, not listening to respond, but listening to understand. And that's a big lesson. It certainly is. And I highly recommend uh, that uh, you know, all of our listeners listen to Melanie's podcast. Where can people find more information on, on that podcast to listen? Yep. You can go to any place you find your podcast and you can go to everyday leaders 50 in 50. So the 50 and then I N 50 and it looks like a little coffee mug and mm -hmm. it's a red everyday leaders across it with the 50 and 50 
Um, and then I'm on all social media. So Facebook, I've got a Facebook group, Everyday Leaders, LinkedIn, uh, Melanie Qualls, Q-U-A-L-L-S, A-K-E. Uh, and, and then Instagram, Everyday Leaders 50 and 50, Twitter. Um, so I'm everywhere and I'm getting ready. I got to share this, Andy. So when I started the podcast, I thought I not only want to have a year of podcasting, but I'd like for those leaders to show up at a live event. I would yes. love to be able to celebrate them because this is my passion. So in March, uh, March 2nd of 2019, I hosted the Everyday Leaders from the first year. And we had it at the Art Museum here in Indianapolis. And they came and presented and I did a half day workshop. And so this year, February the 29th, I came back to the University of Indianapolis, which is my alma mater. And we are hosting the second annual live event. And it's gonna be in the, uh, the RB Annis Theater uh, right here on the campus. And so we have 128 seats. We just got a sponsor from Chick-fil-A. Wow, uh, nice. A full sponsor for the event, and because they believe in the leadership values, right? And they're bringing some of their team in to learn, and and so I just see this as you know my vision of what am I going to do because I feel something bigger inside of me has now turned into a full day workshop with sponsors, and like you said, the Airstream Mobile Studio has evolved, yes. and so we're starting to take that to events uh, for corporate workshops for interviewing uh, corporate leaders for doing testimonials inside of uh, the, the, um, the Airstream and just using it as an idea to promote leadership, mobile leadership values, all right, in a unique way. And so, yeah, the growth, the capacity for where this is gonna go is just unbelievable. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, that's fantastic. I, I think that uh, it's so cool that you're bringing that studio and you know you have the, the summit coming up. Who are some of the guests that you're going to have at the, the summit? Oh my goodness. So if you go to everydayleaders.com, you can connect to this journey. Um, so real quickly, uh, the, I'm having eight speakers. The keynote is Tracy Lynn Martin. She is a kayaker that has rheumatoid arthritis and has circumnavigated three of the five Great Lakes. Wow. And so she's March 1st is her expedition for 2020. So she's going to go back and try to break the world record for for this venture right with someone that has chronic pain to be able to circumnavigate all five of the great lakes uh and in you know we've had a mild winter but that doesn't mean that it's going to stay mild because right. oh, yeah. uh, it gets really cold up here and uh, so she's going to be our keynote and then sonia etchemendi uh, has just launched a movement i call it a movement and uh 10 can moments and so her message is all about how you bring gratitude into your life and how it changes your life every single day. And I cannot wait for her to connect her message here live. Um, and so she's just launched this um, in the last couple of months with her Christmas can, and now she's going with her school cans, her Mother's Day cans, and really gonna teach us all about that process and um, how, it, how it connected from her life. And uh, Chip Baker, Chip Baker is, one of those guys that you really need to connect to as well, he has um, called the Success Chronicles. And for about three years, he's been going all around the country and interviewing people uh, real quick on Zoom. And then he just got certified by John Gordon. And so nice. his career is just, he's got a couple of books that he's co-authored, all about leadership and value principles. And he is just a wonderful, wonderful guy. He's a coach. He's a trainer. Um, at a school down in Texas, um, right outside of uh, uh, Houston in Conroe, Texas. And so he's just, you know, an influencer and he's a wonderful, wonderful human being. Uh, I love him. And so then I'm going to have Kathleen Grimes is coming from a foster care agency. She's a director of um, foster children and parents. And so her program, she's going to really talk about the value of why we need so many parents to give and the things that we need in our communities to make them stronger. So she'll be speaking. Uh, Melanie Fusilier talks about parents pursuing purpose and how if we have ethical values as parents, she was a teacher and a coach and now she is a stay-at-home mom that has a couple of businesses that she's really 
creating this movement for helping parents understand how do you take those few moments with your kids to really influence their life, right? What are mm -hmm. the things you can do that are easy? Um, and so her groups are really just growing and expanding. Um, and then Jamal Sylvester, Jamal is a graduate of Ball State, but it took him three times to graduate, a three-time college dropout. He was wow. had an MBA scholarship, MBA. He was gonna get a ticket, a million dollar contract to the MBA, right? He did not come from a wealthy family. He came from a very difficult family life, but he went to Ball State on this scholarship, signed on, had a, had a, um, a contract for the MBA, getting ready to jump on board with the MBA, and he made one decision that changed his entire life. And so it took him off the team. He lost the contract. It took him 27 more years to finish school. And so now he goes out and talks to kids and families about the value of failing forward and how, mm -hmm. what he's done and what he's learned. And so just last year, he walks down, you know, at Ball State and gets his degree. And so I'm so proud of his journey, but he just became a part of the John Maxwell team. So he's going to go through certification in August. And I'm so excited to be a part of his journey. So oh. for people, and he's in the NBA, he's in the Indiana Basketball Hall of Fame. And so oh. that's something to really, uh, I'm so proud of him. Um, and then a couple of more people, I have Jeff Patterson that's talking about, he's a Indianapolis Police Department um, officer, and he teaches on protective thinking. So how do you, in your own environment, you know, be very careful of the things that you need to be aware of today? Uh, and so the simple things that you can do if you're in uh, unfamiliar locations. And so he's going to be, he teaches this all over the world and was just at the Drug Force uh, Task Agency a couple of days ago, sending me some text messages. So I'm like, oh, I can't wait <laughs> to see for you to teach us. Um, and then the last speaker is Jennifer Garrett. And she has seven degrees. She has five children, a single parent, and has just left corporate America because her campaign is all about moving the ball. That's her hashtag, move the ball. Mm -hmm. She just released her own podcast called, um, oh, she's going to kill me. <laughs> 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 she's got a group inside the huddle, but move the ball is her campaign. And, um, and I believe that's the name of her podcast. Look at me. I'm just going blank. Jennifer A. Garrett though. And, and so she wrote a book called move the ball and it was all about football strategy. She loves football, but it's really mm -hmm. about how you strategize for your life. Mm -hmm. And so uh, a few weeks ago, February 3rd, she launched her podcast and she is really interviewing top athletes and professionals that say, how do you take today and move, you know, what you want? How do you move it forward? And so she's going all over the world and teaching and training and coaching. And, and so I'm so proud of her. She's a reservist and, um, you know, it's not easy to be a single parent, but what she's doing uh, and really inspiring and influence the world with her passion. I just mm -hmm. absolutely love her. So that's the guest list. And it's, it's going it's to one. be <laughs> incredible, incredible. Yes. Yeah. There's not only is it, you know, a lot of people, but each one has a very unique story and they're a leader in their own way, which I think is so cool. There's just there's a lot of different industries and, you know, um, so many great stories and each one has their own unique journey. So that's going to be a fantastic event. So definitely check that out. Um, the and the website. theme is change the world. The theme for the change event the is change the world. So I think, right, right. Everybody brings their own story of how, what they are doing to influence and change their world that changes the world. That's fantastic. Yeah. So that's going to be a fantastic event. Really looking forward to hearing how that goes. And um, that's, yeah, that's just incredible. I think that's going to be a fantastic event. Now, um, last question here for you. Uh, you said that your your podcast uh, is, ev is called Everyday Leaders. In your mind, what are some qualities of an everyday leader? Oh, gosh, I love this question. You know, I ask this to a lot of people and I say, well, what, do, what does your mind think about when they say everyday leaders? And so I think for a lot of people, right, we forget that how we show up and smile at someone how we give our energy to people, how we open the door for someone, how we say, I can do that task for you. I can take that off of your plate. I can go to a neighbor's and take them cookies, <laughs> right? I, I can do the extra task that your boss wants to do because they need to go on vacation with their family. 
you know, volunteering to be able to say, I need to show up for other people first. And so intentionally saying, what can I do every single day to add value to someone else? What can I do every single day to show up thinking about other people's needs first? Now, as a parent, you may say, well, I have to do that because I have kids, right? But it's not your responsibility. It's how you think. It's your mindset. And because I believe when we change our behavior, it's all through our mindset. And so showing up, knowing that every single day you can add value in some way, some unique way that's your brand, that will become how you lead your life with success. That's a great way to end it. I love that message. Uh, Melanie, this was so much fun. I feel like we could probably go on for a few more hours here, but <laughs> um, this is a fantastic conversation. And I'm so glad that we were able to make this connection. And I uh, just want to, again, thank you for, for joining us on the Let's Be Real podcast. I really enjoyed this. Thank you so much, Andy. And remember, be real and be that everyday leader in your life. I really appreciate this opportunity.